I'm Catherine Barrett Sweat, and I'm going to be reading from my new book, Voice Message, which was published by Autumn House Press. Um, I'm going to read a sequence of sonnets called Vermeer's Daughters. It's a crown of sonnets, and that's a particular form that involves a series in which the last line of one sonnet becomes the first line of the next, and the last line of that sonnet becomes the first line of the following sonnet. And my, the series can be any length, but my series is 14 sonnets. And the great thing about that is then you get a 15th sonnet, which is comprised of all the first lines. Um, I have always wanted to write a poem about Vermeer, and I never really got something that worked for me. And then um, about four years ago, I read A Crown of Sonnets by Anna Evans um, in Mezzo Camin magazine, and I thought, it was wonderful, and I thought maybe I could do something like that with Vermeer. And so I started doing a lot of research into his paintings, and just I already loved many of them, but I got to know the whole body of work. And um, as I started picking paintings to write about, I realized I was drawn to the paintings of young women working or uh, in conversation with young men. And the more I started thinking about the images and responding to them, the more these paintings drew me to my memories of my daughter who had died a few years before. And so the sequence became not just about Vermeer's paintings, but also about loss and um, memory. And the sequence has an epigraph um, from uh, Leon Battista Alberti, a Renaissance uh, figure, that says, through painting, the faces of the dead go on living for a very long time. So grief and loss are not things that happen in a minute. And so this sequence of sonnets is part of my remembering my daughter, but also thinking about how art um, can help us to understand people who are no longer there. So Vermeer's Daughters. One, the girl with the wine glass. What parent knows the thoughts of a young daughter? Assuming that his model was Maria, Vermeer's firstborn, posed as he often caught her, giving that mocking look he used to see. A kind I saw when my own teenage child stared at me if I tried to interfere with what she did. Her challenges were mild, a quiet distance captured by Vermeer and all the space around his characters is calm. The open window, pattern tile, the viewer's free to see what she prefers, the suitor's leer, the maiden's too broad smile. Some parents might be glad never to know what her mysterious glance might really show. Two, woman in blue reading a letter. What her mysterious glance might really show, how can we guess? She doesn't look at us. White letter floats above, blue dress below, spreads all around. Her waist's voluminous, while flattened on the wall another globe, suggests the father writes from overseas. But now the scholars say her ocean robe may just be fashion and not pregnancy. When I was pregnant, I just looked too fat, so on the bus most writers let me stand. I'd read a book with half a mind on what I read, another half on what I planned or hoped to do once I had had my daughter. A window opened on the sound of water. Three, officer and laughing girl. A window opened on the sound of water. Her face is glowing with great happiness. What is she thinking of this burger's daughter? The beauty of her showy mustard dress his gallant gesture, confident and bold. A velvet elbow and swashbuckling stance creates a shining triangle of gold. Together, they're an emblem of romance. This memory of what love used to be, a golden haze, a dash of velvet red, a glass of wine, and possibility of travel in the map above your head. Now they're long gone, and have nowhere to go. Vermeer paints what we know, we cannot know. Four, girl reading a letter at an open window. Vermeer paints what we know we cannot know. 
The light appears miraculously on pearls. The figure vibrates in a yellow glow that filters through the leaded pane. His girls are either sinking deep inside their heads or staring from the frame at Jan Vermeer, whose vision of their shining golden threads the camera projected to his rear. He paints another view of her that hovers, a gibbous face faint in the window fog, while scholars speculate about her lovers and iconography they catalog, the fallen fruit, the rumpled rug, gold curl, I only feel the distance from the girl. Five, a woman asleep. I only feel the distance from the girl, alone, asleep. We know our children drink, and in their drunkenness the room might whirl, but we cannot imagine what they think. X-rays show us an absent man, a dog, as if the work were painted by DeWitt, a pooch in the church, or Mies, or Pierre de Hooch. Could she be drunk and snoring just a bit? Above her on the wall, a painted mask suggests the same small drama might exist. But as I never got the chance to ask whom my dead daughter might have loved or kissed, or if she died untouched, she never said. Before her is a solid barricade. Six, woman with a pearl necklace. Before her is a solid barricade, abandoned instruments and furniture, a monument of light and stiff brocade, a golden jacket trimmed and spotted fur that signifies the season and the class, and that the painter liked this warmer hue against her skin as she looks in the glass as if adornment's all she has in view. She puts her mask on for the world to share, the mask the painter paints and lets dissolve, the mask that seems to say she does not care, a mask whose studied beauty can't resolve the meaning of this enigmatic girl, a grace note struck that shimmers like a pearl. Seven, woman with a lute. A grace note struck that shimmers like a pearl, the string her right hand casually picks as her left fingers elegantly curl around the pegs. Below, the harmonics are sounding on the half-forgotten vial. She's far from us, her back against the wall, and does the curious glance, the subtle smile, suggest she hears her suitor in the hall? No narratives provided by Vermeer, the lover might be far, the map behind. The instrument might be a sign he's near. I see in her something I need to find, but I can't hear the music that she made, the image, just the surface that she played. Eight, a lady standing at a virginal. The image, just the surface that she played, the music that the painter draws is not more sweet than if the stops were pulled and stayed. Like Orpheus, one sense is all we've got. This caryatid holding up the sound divides the painting as one might the strings and splits the dark and light of the background so that it seems a perfect octave rings. The music that he paints is so divine, unwrapping all our tendons and our joints, unstringing all the nerves along our spine. It is not sound, but light in brilliant points. But still one sense is not enough for me. Her picture is a frail metonymy. Nine, woman holding a balance. Her picture is a frail metonymy of justice as the balance comes to rest. Behind her, Christ is sorting damned and free. Pale as the damned, she weighs a nothingness. Despite an urge I feel to simplify, I can't clear out my daughter's childhood room to organize the clutter for the eye, to leave the space wide open for the broom, to narrow down my life to just one task, to tune the instrument in morning's glare, to be someone who never needs to ask, to stand and stare, but really not to care, to feel myself become my social mask, a single room that might be anywhere. 10, the music lesson. A single room that might be anywhere, a black-edged frame contains the world for me, 
a man, a window, instruments, a chair, a glow that spreads inside just like the sea, whose briny smell came through to Jan Vermeer. As if, at last, I'm in the lady's head, as if her vision in my eyes appears, fine wine, a globe, sheet music, letters, bread. By emptying the room of extra stuff, he underscores the overtones of space, the countless symbols painted with a brush, the outline of the loss we try to trace when bodies sink into their gravity, a plaster walls, the emptiness we see. 11. The Lace Maker. A plaster walls, the emptiness we see behind the woman's strange reflected glow when she's alone and she can finally feel all the things she never wants to show. Familiar strands that follow endlessly the steady stitch that goes as it must go. He paints the distance, strength, dexterity, behind the mundane tasks that women know. The patience, art, and industry to sit for hours dissolving in the sunny plaster, a face half lit, her fingers poised to knit, and nothing telling her she must go faster. In moments when our thoughts and work cohere, for every one of us, a small Vermeer. 12. The Milkmaid for every one of us a small Vermeer, ourselves emerging from a hand or face. This maid has massive shoulders, arms, and rear that fill and organize an emptied space. The painter shows his own delight in work by rendering her focus at her chore. The elegant precision as she measures. It seems the tiny tile at the floor of Cupid might suggest some other pleasures. The broken pane, the rough-hewn plaster textures, the wet-on-wet, wet, impasto, glazes, scumbles, techniques that scholars teach in schoolroom lectures, the inward focus as the outward crumbles, this knowledge that we're always on the brink, just as the liquid pours, but never sinks. 13. A Young Woman with a Water Pitcher Just as the liquid pours, but never sinks, I every day defy the gravity, deny there's any reason why I blink, except perhaps a moat caught in my eye. Behind her form, the map and sun-splotched walls, the lightness where her dark dress is immured. Outside, the colored glass, the morning calls of sailors and the slap of boats secured. Preparing her ablutions for the day, she heard the neighbor's baby as she laughed and smelled the rotting food and salty spray. She's shutting out the boats and morning draft. But these are only my imagined links. There is no story telling what she thinks. 14. Girl interrupted at her music. There is no story telling what she thinks. Our own close guarded children can't be known. So we extrapolate from the small chinks in adamantine armor they have grown. Vermeer reminds me of my ignorance. With any child, insight comes unplanned. From time to time, an unexpected glance creates the image that we understand. I try to find my daughter who is dead in music, painting, or a carved stone name. Her voice is gone, so many words unsaid, a silent love the most will ever claim. Outside the window, there is sky and water. What parent knows the thoughts of a young daughter? 15. Vermeer's Daughters What parent knows the thoughts of a young daughter? What her mysterious glance might really show? A window opened on the sound of water. Vermeer paints what we know we cannot know. I only feel the distance from the girl. Before her is a solid barricade. A grace note struck that shimmers like a pearl, the image just the surface that she played. Her picture is a frail metonymy, a single room that might be anywhere, a plaster walls, the emptiness we see, where every one of us, a small Vermeer, just as the liquid pours but never sinks, there is no story telling what she thinks. Thank you and stay safe.